Hey there, ladies and gents, magic fans of all ages. Uh, today I'm going to be opening the Ajani Valiant Protector. I just got both of these. I've already done the Tezzeret, which was a gift for my girlfriend, and now I'm going to be doing my deck because I like the Lion Mage more than I like the uh, Artificer. And I'm sorry if you can hear like a uh, some noise in the background. I have a few things running. Oh, there's a little thing on the back here. Get started playing magic right away. Unite the rogue inventors of Kaladesh to build up an unstoppable force of renegades. Ready to stand against corruption and retake the capital, join forces with the mighty planeswalker Ajani Goldmane with a card unique to this deck to claim your victory. Real quick, I'd like to apologize about the way I sound, my voice. I have been sick for what feels like forever, and it's really annoying me. I always hate getting the cards out of the plastic, but they have a little thing that you can fit your thumb in here. Come on, Johnny. Don't want you to get damaged. There we go. <coughs> Sorry about that. A Johnny Valiant Protector. Four. One green, one white. Mythic. Nice and foil shiny. Plus two, put two one one counters on up to one target creature. That is an ability that annoys me so much, because with how this deck, with how this set is working with counters, I would rather be able to put that on two. That would make this card way stronger, because uh, having two 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 thopters is way harder than having one three three thopters to get rid of. Then we have another plus ability, plus one. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now, that obviously has a plus and a, and a, a negative. Well, the plus, of course, is the counter to this guy and the creature that unfortunately doesn't go on the field. If it went on the field, it would probably be a minus one or a minus two. Oh my, I need to drink some water after this. But then, the negative is that you can send, say, five lands to the bottom of your deck, and then only have six lands to work with for the rest of the game. You know, which is really bad, and what really worries about, what really worries me about this guy and Tezzeret. And just comparing the boxes, they both look so dang nice. Ajani has that nice, perfect golden color, and Tezzeret has this ma majestic magnetic purple color that I just love. Both of the box arts for these guys' decks look breathtakingly beautiful. I love it so, so very much. Oh, I didn't read his... Minus 11, which is very steep. Kind of wish this guy started with 5 or 6. So that's not, you know, kind of... Eh, when it comes to reaching it. Uh, minus 11, put X 1-1 one, one counters on target creature, where X is your life total. That creature gains trample until end of turn. <coughs> and I'd just like to point out that the creature gains trample is a second ability, because if you look, there's a period right there. So it does one, and then it does the other. Which is kind of interesting. Now the unfortunate part about that for me, is I would have given it indestructible, rather than trample. Oh, I hate this. These decks are kind of hard to get into. There it goes. Okay. We have, of course, the little Aether Revolt, you know, story of a Johnny bit here. The two packs, one of which is an Ajani and one of which is a Tezzeret. I find that funny. But first, we're going to be going through the deck. As we can see, the first card in it is Solemn Recruit. One thing I've noticed is that each color has its own theme for this uh, 
set, something I didn't really feel Kaladesh had. Kaladesh, it seemed like the theme was crazy inventions for every color, but this color, but this time around, it's different. <coughs> Sorry about my coughing. It's really annoying me. Double strike and revolt. Gains 1-1 one, one for its revolt trigger. Uh, 3 for a 2-2. Two, two. A Johnny's Aid. Two copies of it. One thing that's interesting to me about this is a Johnny looks almost ancient in this card. It's a 4 cost for Johnny Colors. When a Johnny Aid enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card named a Johnny Volume Protector. Reveal it and put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Sacrifice a Johnny's Aid. Prevent all combat damage. A creature of your choice would would deal this turn. So, creature of your choice. So, it could be an opponent. It could be anything. Very nice enchantment there. And you have two of them. Aid from the cow. X1. I love how the decks, the uh, Planeswalker decks, actually pull pretty good cards from uh, <coughs> from the actual set rather than just having crappy cards from pre previous sets at the revolt trigger at the beginning of your end step if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn reveal the top card of your library if it's a permanent card you may put it in, in onto sorry the battlefield otherwise you may you may put it on the bottom of your library uh, Naranum's Renegade, 1 for a 1-2, Death Touch Revolt, green with Death Touch, I love seeing that, Revolt is a 1-1 one, one counter, on it if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, when it enters the battlefield, X2 of that guy, Verdant Automaton, not really a good card, <coughs> 2 and then 4 for its ability, which only gives you 1-1, one, one. I'm not really a fan of it. A Johnny's Comrade, Elf Soldier, for two. Trample at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control an Johnny Planeswalker, put a 1-1 one -one counter on a Johnny's Comrade. Now that's actually pretty dang good, all things considered, for the simple fact that that's every combat. And it's at the beginning, and this guy doesn't need to be attacking. Three of them. Uh, audacious Infiltration. Infiltrator, the, which is, of course, the little goblin we have there. Uh, Dwarf Rogue, Audacious Infiltrator, can't be blocked by artifact creatures. I find that funny that the Audacious Infiltrator is quite obviously talking about this guy, but it turns out to be him. Kind of interesting there. Three of him. Uh, get up her guide, two and a green. And then for two and a green... Target creature you control can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less this turn. Kind of interesting. I guess that means that's basically an anti-chump block ability. Then we have Silk Weaver Elite. This card just screams stinking um, uh, uh, Mission Impossible. Reach and Revolt. This Revolt... Uh, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, you get a card. Reach allows it to, of course, stop your enemy's flyers. Deadeye Harpooner, Revolt. If a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, destroy target tapped creature and opponent controls. Very nice. Armor Craft Judge. When Armor Craft Judge enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So quite obviously, you want this card in a deck with some bandars and creatures that can shift around 1-1s. One Revolt gets a 1-1 one -one counter if a permanent control left the battlefield this turn. Oh, and trample. Sorry. Same guy. Red scale Tusker. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each other creature you control. I always forget if abilities that mention creatures... Also hit token creatures, or creature tokens. I think it's anything with creature, but other times I catch myself up on that. I need to look that up and just 
I believe the word I'm looking for is imbibe it on my memory, on my brain or whatever. Other than that, this card is stupidly good. Airdrop Aeronauts. Flying Revolt. Uh, I have a permanent you control. Left the battlefield this turn. You gain five life. So five for a heal spell with flying and four three. That's not bad at all. Then we got your artifacts. Which renegade map enters the battlefield tapped. You can sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shovel your library. So this is just a fetch card. Which of course is not that bad. All things considered, then we got Prey Upon, which is, of course, one of my favorite cards at the pre-release. Target creature you control, fights target creature you don't control, so they just deal damage to each other. <coughs> Good way to take things out. Enchant Land. Enchanted Land has tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Instant, put target artifact on the bottom of its owner's library. Very good for taking care of Tezzeret's power. Then we have Dread Devil Dragster. Another very cool looking card. At the end of combat, if, drag, if this card attacked or blocked this combat, put a velocity counter on it. Then if it has two or more velocity counters on it, sacrifice it and draw two cards. I hate how that's an automatic ability, but for 3 for 4, 4... Crew 2, that's not that bad. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control for Inspiring Roar. A Johnny being awesome. I'm kind of wondering, because I'm 95% certain that's Gideon there. What's up with his face? That could not be Gideon, but I think it's Gideon. Uh, engineered Might. Choose 1. Target creature gets 5-5 five, five and Trample until end of turn. Creatures you control get 2-2 two, two and gain Vigilance until end of turn. This is a card I greatly prefer. Quite obviously, I'd do the 2-2 two, two myself. Because that's 5-5, five, five, that's just one removal. 2-2 two, two to everything and Vigilance, that's Board Wipe. Then we have your Color Fixin' Lands. Your green, your white. And there we go. Toss Johnny on here. And now to the end of this thing, we have two packs. I'll be taking the Ajani pack. My girlfriend's going to be doing the uh, this one here. We always split our packs, so we never just buy one pack when we go to the store. We always get, you know, it's an even number that we split. Toss that aside. Uh, going to be skipping straight to the good stuff. Ironclad Revolutionary. Hidden Herbalist, Sly Requisitioner, Quicksmith Rebel, two lands, one of which, of course, is Foil, Shiny Shiny, Quicksmith Rebel is fairly common, actually, I think I have, like, ten of those, maybe more, it's definitely the, uh, rarer I have the most of, not that I'm complaining, I just kind of wish it was a way better card than it is. I mean, you guys are going to have to listen to me cough for this video. Next up, we have Gifted Aetherborn. Uh, Narnum Renegade. Enraged Giant. Gehenny Undying Partisan. Island and Energy. The funny thing is, is this is, I believe, the fifth Gehenny that we've gotten. I have three. She has two now. This is kind of ridiculous. Yeheni, of course, is one of my favorite cards from the set, just because of how stinking good he is. He has haste, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a 1-1 counter on Yeheni. Sacrifice another creature, Yeheni gains indestructible. All you really need to do is graft stinking hexproof on him, and he's downright near immortal. Of course... Yeheni is stupidly good in the black-white deck. <coughs> you know, you drop him, then you board wipe, and he becomes like a 30-30 or something. Which is just lovely. So, I have now gone through both of the decks, these lovely, lovely things. 
And so, real quick, if you don't care about anything after this point, feel free to uh, uh, skip out now and the video. If you want to leave a like, that's appreciated because I'm still a small channel. And a like can help us out immensely. Close this sucker. If you decide to subscribe for some for any reason whatsoever, whether you like me, whether you like the channel, uh, be sure that you hit that little bell thing, because I recently subscribed to a channel, then I forgot that I subscribed to it, and I was going through my subscriptions, saw it, and was like, alright, I subscribed to that, like, two days ago. Why have I not been getting anything from it? It was because I didn't hit the bell, because apparently if you don't hit the bell, you get nothing from the channel. So that's it for this. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.